So about a year and a half ago, Canon released the M50. And yeah, I ended up picking one up at the time. I thought, you know, this might be a nice little B cam for uh, shooting some videos or, you know, maybe some of those vlogs that I never actually make um, because it has that nice flippy screen. But uh, in owning the camera, I kind of fell in love with it as a stills camera. Some of the best images that have been taken or that others have taken of, of me and my family when we're you know out traveling uh, have been taken on this m50 it's got these great little compact lenses um you know really compact body and you know they say that the best camera is the one you have on you and time and time again even though i have you know an a7 III and i have one of the rx100 series from sony uh, if i knew i was going to be taking stills primarily i would reach for the M50. And I still prefer the Sony's for video, but um, this M50, I just really fell in love with from a still standpoint. But when Canon recently uh, announced the M6 Mark II, looking at the specs, I decided to upgrade. So after having the M6 Mark II for about a week and a half, I think I'm sold on it. I'm gonna be selling my, my beloved uh, Canon M50. And I wanted to do this video to kind of talk about why. What is it about the M6 Mark II that got me to upgrade from the M50. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, you know, right off the bat, looking at the top dial, the M6 Mark II has this custom function one, custom function two on the dial, whereas the M50 does not. You know, just being able to flip back and forth and have, you know, all of your indoor, maybe family shots on C1, and then your C2 set up to take like outdoor landscapes or something like that. So being able to click back and forth, something really useful. Um, and that obviously was missing on the Canon M50. Um, next, you know, if we flip to the back of the camera, the M6 Mark II has this manual focus, autofocus switch. I find that to be so helpful because, you know, when maybe you want to take like a, like a nice macro shot and you, you want to lock in that focus so it isn't hunting around, flip it, you know, flip it real quick over to manual focus, dial in, write exactly the focus that you want. Automatically, you know, the peaking comes on right when you flip to manual focus, take your picture, back to autofocus, you know, keep taking picture of the family or like kids running around, things like that. Next up, this is kind of an obvious one. You know, a lot of people have talked about this, but you have this dial function here, um, which means that on top, you actually have two different dials on the M6, whereas on the M50, you only had the one. So that's nice because you can have, you know, aperture here, uh, shutter speed here. And then here's the other big one. There's a fully spinning wheel on the back of the M6 Mark II, whereas on the Canon M50, it was just buttons. So you have three full dials on this. So you can do your aperture, your shutter speed, and maybe your exposure compensation, or you know if you're not doing auto ISO, you could switch your ISO over to that. But having three wheels just gives you immediate control over so many of your different shooting options. It's been really awesome to shoot with this. Okay, so the next thing that I wanna talk about, the next difference is the, you know, the M6 Mark II actually has a bounceable flash. You know, it has this little pop-up flash and what you can do is you can lean it back like this and then bounce it off a ceiling and you get a much better um, flash image. Uh, you, you know, you can see with these examples that uh, it's so much more washed out when you have a direct flash versus the bounced flash. And that's something that I've done quite a bit on my um, my RX100, uh, which, which I'm shooting this overhead video with. Um, I just really like being able to bend that flashback. I, I like, there's no situation where I would ever shoot a direct flash into a subject, but I do find that the bounce flash, um, you know, will basically take an unusably dark photo and, and make it usable. Um, whereas, you know, if you look at the Canon M50, it does have a flash in it, but it's not bounceable. I've literally never once used this flash. And already with, you know, the M6 Mark II, there's been a couple occasions where I've gone ahead and bounced that flash off the ceiling. All right, the next difference, um, you know, the, the M6 Mark II has an electronic shutter. And I just find that, you know, when you're taking kind of candid pictures at a party or something like that of, you know, family and friends, uh, having that mechanical shutter slapping away is a little bit obtrusive. Whereas, um, you know, with the, the M6 Mark II, you get that electronic shutter going and it's, it's more like a cell phone, you know, it's not, as, it's not as disturbing. You don't have it just clacking away. So the next feature that the M6 Mark II has, you know, over the Canon M50 is the ability to set a minimum shutter speed when you're dealing with auto ISO. This is like so helpful for when you're, you know, shooting either fast moving subjects or shooting in low light. And I'll kind of, you know, basically what you can say is we'll set ISO to automatic, but we'll have the ISO ramp up. So the shutter speed never goes below what we've set our min shutter speed to. So just a couple examples, you know, if I was shooting, um, you know, indoors, let's say, um, but you know, maybe kids are running around inside and, and it's, the lighting's kind of low. 
you know, you can't have like a one fifteenth of a second shutter speed with any kind of motion, you know, in your subject because it's just going to turn into a blur. But you also want the ISO to, you know, ramp up if needed in order to give you enough of an exposure for a good image. But you don't want it to, you know, go too far because like, you know, with ISO, you basically want the lowest ISO possible to get a good exposure. So setting that min shutter speed basically says, you know, if you need to ramp up the ISO, go ahead and do so, but only until you get to uh, 1 60th of a second. Um, or, you know, if you have really fast moving foot, you know, subject, maybe 1 to 50th of a second or whatever it is. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about in the M6 Mark II is um, the digital image stabilization. Now the M50 also had digital image stabilization, but it was, it was a little bit wobbly. Um, and then it was, you know, cropping in on like 1080, I don't know, it wasn't, I never found that I really used it very much, but the digital image stabilization on the M6 Mark II, especially the enhanced version is really stable. Now I know I said, I don't really use this um, as a video camera much because I prefer the Sony system, but you know, if you're just gonna shoot like a quick selfie style video and you have, you know, this nice wide angle um, 11 to 22 on there, um, I, th I would use that enhanced image stabilization. I found it to be like gimbal-like stable. All right, the next one that I wanna talk about, um, on the M6 Mark II, you actually get some kind of pro uh, time-lapse features. With the, with the Canon M50, when you were doing a time-lapse, there like the, the slowest shutter speed that you could put on this was I think half a second. Um, whereas on the M6 Mark II, you can set any shutter speed you want. Traditionally, when you're shooting video, you want to have um, sort of that 180 degree shutter rule. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, then you want your shutter speed to be 1 60th of a second. And what that does is it gives um, some nice motion blur to your video, some natural looking motion blur. So time lapse, you know, you also want to introduce some motion blur, though my understanding is the it's not necessarily at the 180 degree rule where your um, uh, shutter speed is twice what your um, frame rate is, but you know, you do want the ability to give some motion blur. So you want, you know, if you're, if you're ta only taking one picture every 10 seconds, let's say, you know, you might want to have a one second exposure, a two second exposure. So when you speed it all up, it looks like, you know, the, the blur that people are having, um, you know, looks nice. Cause otherwise, you know, if you don't do that, then really what you're getting is sort of the same thing as just, uh, you know, speeding up video. Now that's also going to come in handy anytime you're taking, you know, maybe like some astro photography time lapses or, some you know cityscape at night uh, style um, time lapses. You're gonna want to take that longer exposure so you can get more light. Maybe as cars drive around, you get you know kind of some streaks of light going through your time lapse. You know that's gonna be possible as you can increase that shutter speed. Okay, so the next improvement uh, that the M6 Mark II brings over the Canon M50, at least for me, that I want to talk about is the inclusion of that USB-C port. Now, you know, for me, I want USB-C everything. I, I don't want to have to bring a bunch of chargers, a bunch of dongles, um, stuff like that. I've got, you know, a MacBook Pro, you know, Sony a7 III, all these other things are already USB-C in my life. So having USB-C and be able to charge the battery in camera is a huge benefit. Um, you know, the M50 can't charge in camera. So if you forget to bring that charger, or if you're out, you, know, you can't use uh, you know, the, your phone charger or something like that. Um, that actually happened to me two weekends ago. I was over at my parents' house, you know, taking some video of the kids and the, it ran out of batteries. I forgot to bring an extra battery with me and I couldn't, you know, it was frustrating that I couldn't just plug this in and charge it with the battery inside. With the M6 Mark II, you can do that. And I know that there's been some talk about, you know, because it, it requires a power delivery um, input that, you know, you have to buy Canon's proprietary power delivery adapter that's like $200. No, that's not true at all. You can, you know, companies like Anchor sell power delivery compatible um, USB-C chargers on Amazon for like $15. You know, if you have a MacBook Pro, one of the new ones with the USB-C, that charger will work on here. Even, you know, I, I got this Apple 18 watt uh, USB-C charger that came with an iPad that I bought last year. And I think these are now shipping with the, um, the iPhone 11 Pro, you know, this will charge it. So, you know, USB-C is starting to become ubiquitous and power delivery is cheap. And there's probably other devices that you have that, that use power delivery. So the fact that, you know, this camera requires power delivery to me, I think is um, not a downside at all. And I think that has actually been kind of misreported in 
um, you know, some of the other reviews that I've seen on this camera. One last pro that the M6 Mark II has over the M50 is uh, for video out, you know, they both have clean HDMI out, but if you, if you take HDMI out of the M6 Mark II to a video recorder, it'll actually output 422 10-bit. Um, you know, that increased color space uh, you know, could come in handy if you were gonna use this to do some green screen work or something like that. Now, like I said, because it's limited to only 30 frames per second, and because I prefer the look of the downsampled um, 6K that you get with the Sony uh, systems, I'm probably not gonna use this for video very much, but that's another uh, pro that uh, I haven't seen a lot of other people talk about, so I wanted to be sure to highlight it here. All right, so that kind of takes us into the cons. You know, what what am I gonna miss about the M50? Um, you know, for one is the size. The the M6 Mark II is a little bit bigger. It's just like slightly taller and it's, you know, a little bit wider. If we put them, you know, back to back like this, it doesn't look like much on camera, but when you feel them, you know, they're about the same weight. There's, you know, yes, the M6 is a little bit heavier, but it's not that noticeable, but it's just something about the presentation, the way it looks, you you expect this to be big and heavy because it looks like your traditional, um, you know, DSLR camera, whereas, whereas this guy, you know, looks more like a point and shoot. So you expect it to be small and light, even though in reality, they're basically the same. Um, it's just your mind does, does a funny thing there. And that kind of gets us to the next thing. You know, obviously there's no EVF on the M6 Mark II. There is an EVF on the M50. I can't ever remember using the EVF on the M50. I'm mostly kind of, you know, tilting the screen out, looking down, taking shots, you know, trying to get like a low angle shot of like the dog or the kids or something like that. Um, I'm not kind of a, a traditional shooter who's, who's looking through the EVF. So even though there is an electronic EVF available for the M6 Mark II, for now, I'm not gonna buy it. Maybe if I could find like a good deal on a used one or something on eBay, I might pick it up eventually. Um, but to me, that would just add some added bulk and it's, you know, even though I'm a still shooter with this camera system, it's just not something I'm ever gonna use. And then of course, the other big con, again, if you're a video shooter, uh, 24 frames per second, 1080p or 4K on this, although 4K with a crop and you lose two pixel autofocus, no 24 frames per second in any of the shooting modes on this. You could switch it into PAL mode and get 25 frames per second as people have covered. I don't know why Canon would do that. It just seems, it seems petty, it seems cheap. I mean, I know they're trying to protect their like up uh, brand cameras, like I guess the EOS R, but the EOS R has such like a major crop in 4K. Like if I was gonna shoot video, I'm not gonna get an EOS R. Well, if, I guess if I'm gonna deliver in 4K, if I was gonna do 1080p, then the ES, EOS R is kind of like, you know, the perfect um, 1080p camera. But like, what are they trying to push you up market to? Like a, like a C200 or something like that? You know, that's not even in the same ballpark. Why not put 24p in this or at least offer, you know, an R series camera that can shoot 24 frames per second in 4K with no crop. Anyway, enough of a rant about that. So I hope you found this video interesting. I hope uh, you have an M50 and you're thinking about upgrading to an M6. Hope you think that the comparison, um, you know, helped answer that. So I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks so much. Bye.